Hello, thank you for uh, viewing this poster. Uh, the motivation behind it is that there are many aerosols and pharmaceuticals that are hygroscopic and therefore may grow well inhaled into the high humidity of the lung. So this is important for uh, those trying to develop uh, accurate mo CFD models, for example, of lung deposition. So the growth can be extremely rapid uh, for the particle itself, but so the resonance time uh, during inhalation is also very rapid, down around a quarter of a second. So it's really important to understand the initial growth phase of a hygroscopic particle. And surprisingly, um, the current hygroscopic model really hasn't been well validated for this growth or transient phase of the salt droplet. So our, that's part of our motivation. The other part is that the water activity itself, uh, and it's the model of it, uh, and how does it affect the overall accuracy of the model is, is important as well. So the model, as briefly uh, here as I can make it, uh, results in this scenario whereby after a certain amount of humidity in the atmosphere, uh, called the deliquescence relative humidity, and any time of any humidity above that, uh, the partial pressure of water vapor in the atmosphere is going to be greater than that exerted by a salt solution, and therefore water will entrain onto the droplet and it will grow up to the point where those two vapor pressures equilibrate. The simplest model associated with this uh, goes back to Maxwell, actually, and you can see that difference there between uh, the atmospheric partial pressure of water vapor and the that exerted by the droplet. And here we're principally using the uh, the great paper by Brode and Georgopoulos on, on this topic. And you can see uh, here that they expanded that uh, equation so that uh, the relative humidity can be included, that the solute effect associated with the, the amount of salt in the droplet uh, is, is also incorporated here in terms of water activity, A sub W. The Kelvin effect, which has to do with this, the curvature of the droplet and its effect on, on pressure, as well as temperature differences between the droplet and the atmosphere. Uh, the overall equations, these are differential equations, um, are also linked with uh, or coupled with that of the temperature of the droplet over time as it increases in size. So MATLAB was used to couple those two differential equations. Uh, we utilize the ODE45 function primarily, and this calls a subroutine that contains expressions for the two differential equations. So the initial conditions of salt growth, of course, we were concerned with uh, uh, lung deposition, so we used a temperature at 37 degrees centigrade primarily, and then relative humidity around 99.5, so we're looking at high humidities and then whatever salt particle diameter is chosen. Now, here's what I would consider to be an overall framework of the hygroscopic growth process, which really includes two stages, one in which the dry salt particle has to first deliquesce, and during that time period, a film of, of liquid, uh, in this case, we assume to be very close to saturation, uh, incurs around the outside of the particle as it dissolves until it hits a, a certain uh, droplet size at which it's a completely saturated solution, the core is gone, after which um, hygroscopic growth in its kind of classical concept uh, occurs as it dilutes to its equilibrium size. So you can see the equations would start with a, a, a phenot or diameter that's slightly larger than the uh, salt particle expected, and then it works forward from there. Here's some output of the model. It shows the extremely fast growth uh, initially. This is for a one micron sodium chloride particle, uh, after which it starts tapering off. Now, zeroing in on that growth phase, you can see it's practically linear during that time period of deliquescent growth, uh, at which this the, the film uh, is is was retained at a saturation level uh, and, and held constant there until it's kind of released at that point at which it's uh, completely dissolved. Now back to the water activity and its model, uh, you can see that it's uh, fairly simply related to it's the vapor pressure exerted by the droplet relative to that of the ambient atmosphere. 
so that uh, we can see how it can be used to substitute into the, the Maxwell equation here to incorporate the water activity. Now note here, this is AW comma D, which is the water activity of the curved droplet, whereas water activity itself has always been measured from a flat surface. So the previous model shown shows AW. I won't go into how those differences or the, how that transformation was made, but uh, to make that clear. Now, water activity can be modeled in many different ways. I'm only showing two of them here. I mean, the atmospheric sciences, uh, they utilize some other uh, sophisticated methods as well. But the point is obviously to make it as accurate as possible. But with CFD, there's the constraint of, of time and uh, in terms of uh, cranking out uh, some results. So a simple is better. And in this case, um, the simplest way to model water activity is via what's called Routes Law, which is the ratio of the number of moles of water in solution to the number of moles of solute. So it's, it's basically the water fraction rather than the solute fraction. Um, and you can see different forms of it, uh, utilizing, for example, Van Hoft association factor, which increases its accuracy a little bit. Uh, but we utilized a polynomial, and you can see it there. Uh, with an R squared of 1.00. Uh, this is was fit through uh, data given in the Robinson and Stokes uh, electrolyte solutions text, which is considered to be the most accurate uh, indication of sodium chloride water activity relative to the mass percent of the salt in the solution. So you can see how these two e equations uh, deviate from each other rather substantially at the high salt mass percent. So that is where the droplet is just first forming. Um, and then it looks like it goes, uh, they become very coincidental up at the high end, which is where equilibrium is beginning to occur as it becomes more and more dilute. However, blowing up that point, it shows that there's kind of a switch between um, now the Robinson and Stokes equation uh, shows, indicates a higher water activity for a certain mass percent than the Ralt equation does. So that causes a difference in uh, the equilibrium size. Now here's obviously uh, there is going to be a slight difference because of the equation differences. It shows that the route uh, equation will will estimate the equilibrium size uh, higher than that of the RNS polynomial. But the opposite is true down at the at the growth phase. Uh, because of that switch in the way the equations um, model aw so here you can see that there's a um, the route equation underestimates uh, growth uh, to look at it at the steady state level we utilized the values from tang at all these are steady state equilibrium uh, uh, diameters actually relative to the initial droplet diameter they put a curve through it like this, and you can see that the Ralt equation, um, again, underestimates at the low end, but actually overestimates at the high end, uh, as I showed you earlier at 99.5%, whereas the RNS equation um, pretty much nails the, the Tang curve of almost exactly throughout the entire relative humidity range. Now, in terms of validating at the low end or at the, at the growth phase, we utilized a relatively simple uh, apparatus that injected a known relative humidity onto a cover slip uh, with salt particles attached to it. Uh, we did this on an inverted microscope, used a cell phone uh, with its video capture technique to get at the, um, at the growth of the particles over time. So you can see the initial salt here relative to their growing droplets. And with that, we could come up with a measured versus model data as shown here and we looked at the root mean squared error of the of those model versus measured values uh, for both the polynomial and routes law you can see that the R rmse is always smaller for our rns equation for all measurements and just for those looking at the initial measurements uh, so with that uh, you can demonstrate that the hygroscopic mode growth model is is accurate um, and of course its accuracy is going to be 
um, increased with uh, an increase in the accuracy of the water activity model. Uh, we have just gotten a paper out on this in aerosol science and technology. Uh, we hope you can look at that. We included a supplement that includes the MATLAB code and other supplemental types of equations that we hope is uh, of help to anyone else looking at this problem. Thank you very much.